Good morning, YouTube. This is Isaac coming at you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where spring has finally sprung and moods are lifting, the sun is shining. And in that spirit, uh, I thought today I'd make a quick video review of the Suzuki Overdrive Harmonica. You can see it there. So clearly you can tell right now by looking at it, this is not your average ordinary diatonic harmonica. This is a special design that Suzuki made to help enable the overbend technique. So quickly, uh, if you know anything about the overbend technique, that's where you make a pitch rise, uh, and you actually do this by changing your embouchure to stop the reed that normally sounds, and then directing all the airflow to the other reed so that it vibrates in the opposite direction it normally does, so the vibrations are faster, making the sound pop up higher, okay? So uh, very quickly, the, I'll play a six overblow uh, normally. That's what you do. You direct the airflow in such a way that the reed stops, then the other reed starts vibrating, okay? Now, that's tricky for a lot of players to do uh, because it requires multiple things going on in your mouth, and it requires the harmonica to be set up in such a way that that reed uh, can choke out. You can set the gaps lower so that it can choke out. And you have to do sometimes other things to make the harmonica play over bends easily and very well. Uh, this design is different than that. Uh, instead of dealing with the reeds themselves, this design is uh, something to do with the cover plates. So just like all harmonicas have a comb with individual chambers for each reed, set of reeds, I guess, this harmonica's cover plates also have individual chambers for each reed. And you'll notice, because of that, there are a series of 10 holes on each cover plate. Those are, each individual hole is the only place where air can enter or exit for that particular blow or draw reed. What that allows you to do is put your finger over that hole, stopping all air movement for that reed, uh, thereby actually enabling that reed to stop without having to mess with its gaps or anything like that allowing you to then focus all your breath on the opposite reed to sound the overbent note. Uh, in theory, that is uh, going to help you get the overbend easier, more easily, and help you control it while you're doing it. Uh, in practice, it does work, but you're not going to become a magical overblower overnight. You need to also have that technique where you can direct your breath properly to get the, over, the other uh, read to actually sound the overbend note. Uh, but it does help you. It helps you with the first part, which is the stopping of that read. So quickly again, I'll play the overblow without the assistance of the uh, hole, and then I'll play it with, and you can maybe hear a difference in the tone of the overblow. So this is six overblow. Okay, now with the assistance of the hole. So I think you can probably easily hear that it's uh, much more focused, more solid, less airy, uh, less squealy, and it came faster, more distinctly, okay? So that's advantage number one. The other thing is that you can control the overblow a little bit easier because you're not having to focus the energy and keeping that other reed stuck in place because your finger is doing that for you. So uh, listen as I play the overblow, six overblow. Normally I try and bend it up a little bit, uh, put some vibrato or something on it, uh, and you can hear how kind of unstable it is. So you can see it gets difficult to control as you try and bend up uh, because this harmonica hasn't been set up at all for overblows in its reeds. Now listen as I use my finger to stop the uh, other note and then try and bend up with that technique. So you can hear that it stayed solid, distinct, didn't get airy, didn't get squealy. Uh, so that's a real plus, a real big advantage uh, of this design. Now, uh, the other thing that it lets you do is not just get overblows more distinctly that you can already get with your technique. It actually helps you to get overblows that may be difficult for you. So for example, let me try and do the one overblow, which I find impossible to do on most of my harmonicas. So 
So I can't even get the blow read to stop. Let me try it with the assistance of the, the overdrive design. So I actually got it. It wasn't easy, like I said, but I actually got it. Now, if we're talking about a note like, say, the four overblow, which I can normally get, but find sometimes difficult on low harmonicas, this is a G. Um, let's try it without the overdrive effect. So I actually find it impossible. And with the overdrive effect. I need to work on controlling it because I, I don't normally play the four over low on a low harmonica like this. Uh, the other thing it helps you do is overdraw. So on the other side, you also have those individual holes. So let's try the seven overdraw. We'll try it first without the overdrive effect. Can't do it. Let's try it with the overdrive effect. comes out easily, naturally, without hardly any effort on my part. So this is cool. So what I can do now, which I found very difficult before uh, to do, is to play, let's say, a blue scale in that middle octave with the overdrive effect, my forefinger and my thumb, uh, helping me with the six overblow and seven overdraw. Whoops. So, I mean, I haven't really messed around too much with that, but uh, you can see how cool that is. You can actually do some cool stuff with it. So, that's the general principle of how it works. That's uh, my take on the improvement of control that you can get. Now, let's get on to a little critique of this instrument. It's not 100% perfect. There are some design flaws or shortcomings that I think are important that you should know if you're thinking about buying one of these. Um, First of all, note the arrangement of the holes, okay? You see how they're sort of offset, two rows sort of offset from each other? Um, I think that's probably to put them in a place that's natural. You're supposed to have your fingers like this when you're playing, and, and you, you're supposed to be able to slap your whole finger down. Uh, in theory, that's a good thing, but actually in practice, when you're playing and you just want to go to a normal blow note, you accidentally have your finger over one of those holes, it actually stops the note from playing. That's what it's supposed to do. And that can cause some gaps. So for example, if you're playing a riff like this, and you accidentally have your finger down, it sounds like this. That's not what you want, right? So you have to be real conscious of where your finger is. I find that if I put it directly across the back of the harmonica, I can avoid uh, stopping those notes. Now what about trying to do that and do your hand wah-wahs? That's where it gets really difficult. You have to be real conscious of where your fingers are and you have to hold them. I have to hold them like that. So you can see where I've got my finger placed and then I have to try and go across. So it's really difficult in that sense. Um, the other thing is that because of its nature, it has to have full length cover plates. That's, I guess, neutral if you're used to full length cover plates, that's fine. I'm not. I'm used to Marine Band style, Special 20 style cover plates. So I find I actually frequently get lost when I'm trying to find hole one or hole two when I'm out. I'm used to there being a, a drop off that I can feel, and sometimes I miss those notes. So that's something I can compensate, with, uh, compensate for with technique. Um, the other uh, thing is because the cover plates are the way they are, the, uh, the design is the way it is, it only has these two screws holding the whole thing together. Um, and you'd think that would be poor design, but actually because of the individual chambers, um, it actually is a very airtight harmonica. The two screws have enough clamping pressure across the whole thing. Uh, so that's okay. The only thing is that when you take it apart, you uh, have to be real careful when you put it back together because you have to get everything lined up just right. There's no assistance in getting the reed plates and everything all lined up, okay? So be aware of that. Uh, 
Third is the material that it's made out of. Actually, it's a very weighty harmonica. The cover plates are made out of some sort of resin, and so it seems to be the uh, comb. Um, and the material is really smooth on the outside. It feels great on the lips. But it is brittle, and I'll uh, tell you how I know that here in a second. So I'd be really uh, worried about dropping this on the concrete or something like that. It might actually shatter on you. So that's something to be aware of. Um, finally, the individual chamber design, while it helps you do overblows, on normal draw bends actually had the effect of making them more difficult, making them more difficult to achieve and to control, especially as you got close to the bottom of the draw bend, it would sort of fall out on you. So I read some tips on Pat Misson's website about breaking the dividers on the draw replate one through six and the blow replate seven through 10, which will still enable you to do the overblow overdraw effect uh, but will help alleviate those inconsistencies on normal draw bending. Uh, and after having done that, for example, listen to the three hole. Uh, especially the lowest bend in that would be really uncontrollable and it would sound really quite terrible uh, before I opened up those chambers. And that's how I discovered how, just how brittle this thing is. I used a pair of nippers, uh, like wire cutters, to go in there and to sort of snip at it and man it, it broke really easily and it was very brittle so I'd be very careful about dropping this harmonica on the ground. The only other thing uh, I have as a complaint is that the gaps weren't set perfectly on this harmonica uh, out of the box. I had to go in especially the low uh, draw gaps were set a